Uh, welcome everyone to the rapid website design session. Um, I see more participants joining in continuously. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, thank you for joining this afternoon, uh, evening or morning, wherever you are in the world. Um, I know a lot of people went to their home countries and they couldn't make it back for the fall session. So thank you for um, taking out time and coming to this session. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty easy going session, nothing heavy. Um, please bear with me as I'm trying to fiddle with Zoom. I think it's problem at a little unique for all of us. Just give me a second. Okay, so I guess I'll not be able to see you guys then. But I was about to say that um, I would like to see all of your faces uh, with people whom I'm, you know, who are there in the session. Um, so my name is Throv. Um, I like to introduce myself as someone having the brain of a techie, yet heart of an artist. Um, that's because of my unique background. I, uh, my major during my undergrad was computer science and mathematics. And uh, in, I graduated from uh, NYU Tandon School of Engineering in 2020 with a Master of Science in Integrated Digital Media. Currently I work full-time uh, at the school itself as a web designer and developer. Um, I have created so far two websites uh, for the school. These are children websites that reside under the parent website of the school. Uh, one is fellowship opportunities. I don't know uh, if you guys have heard about this, but if not, you should definitely check this out. Um, the second one is the mechatronics controls and the robotics laboratory website. Um, this is specific. Uh, to the Department uh, of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. Um, so this is what we are going to do today. Um, so just to give you an overview, first we are going to understand why we need websites and what is the aim of the session. And then briefly I'll discuss um, the technology behind websites. Then uh, moving on to if we should write our own code or use some web design platforms. And then we'll do a quick, um, not actually quick, that's the main portion where uh, I'll take you guys through Webflow and we'll try to create a one page of website um, right now. Um, and then if you guys have any Q and A's, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, little housekeeping. Um, Screen sharing has stopped as the share window is closed. Oh, I'm so sorry, you guys. Hmm. Share. Can you guys see my screen? Anyone? Yes, we can see it. Oh, thank you. Okay. So um, yeah, uh, feel free to post questions in the chat if you have any, and uh, I'll try uh, in between to see uh, if there are any questions. And feel free to you know let me know if you can't hear my voice or something is not working as it's supposed to be. Um, I'll be happy to you know look into what's going wrong. Um, so let's begin with. Um, the simple idea why should we have a website? Um, this these points apply to if you're you know you you are trying to do a startup or you're trying to build a personal website. So 
these five things came to the top of my mind uh, when I was making this presentation. So a website definitely adds credibility to your profile. It serves as your gateway to the world. Um, helps you control your online presence, assist you to build and grow your network, and serves as a resource center or a memoir if you guys are into um, blogging. There can be many different reasons for uh, why you want to have a website, um, but I don't know. But if you guys have saw, if you guys are applying for job positions, now they have a column there. They say, if you have a portfolio, please share it with us. So, you know, that's just one of the reasons. And I see a lot of PhD students doing that these days. So maybe you want to do that. Um, so the aim for today's session is quite simple, um, to fuel your curiosities and inspire you to create your own website. Um, by learning how to design and build a rapid website uh, with kind of a limited technical knowledge. I understand some of you uh, might be aware with um, what is going to be discussed while some are not. So please, you know, it, it's going to be a fairly simple uh, session. So um, let's get started with what actually goes behind the scenes. Um, when you hit, you know, when you, let's say I'm in a web browser and I enter a URL which says engineering.nyu.edu. So what happens is the computer through your browser sends a request to the server. The server processes uh, the request and sends some data back. Now, uh, the thing here that is to be understand, uh, understood is the server might have a code written in different languages, but it's shown to you as a web page, as a visual output. Um, but the data on the server is not a visual; it, it's not a visual file. So the server, the serv either the you know the server side or your computer browser takes in that code, uh, understands it, and shows you a visual output of what the code have. So as I said, there are um, two sides uh, to building a website. One is a client side, which is your machine or which is the user's machine, or it is the, um, or the you know, server, which we call a server side. So uh, the website that we, the visual output we see is made up of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Our browsers are only able to, um, so to, to make it more simple, let's say, you know, you go to engineering.nyu.edu. I know for a reason that uh, it uses a PHP backend. Um, so, but what you see in your browser, so the browser can only interpret, interpret is the right word that I was looking for. So the browser can only interpret HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. Um, so if the server has PHP, Python, Ruby on Rails, or any of those other languages, the server, so the interpreter on the server side has to change that code from PHP to HTML or HTML and CSS and JavaScript for the browser to understand. If you give the browser a PHP code or a Python code, it will just show you, show the same as text or it will throw an error depending. So uh, there are a lot of web design platforms out there which make, which make it feel very, very simple for us to design websites. Um, one is Webflow, you might have heard WordPress, uh, NYU also provides a WordPress hosting for all the students and community members. Um, we also have Squarespace or Wix. Um, let, let's see another slide that I'll tell you why I prefer coding um, rather than using web design platforms. But before that, let's all remember this as we go through the session that 
all the modern web browsers can only interpret HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. That's it. And if you happen to be one of the people who use um, Internet Explorer 6 or before, I'm sorry, my friends, <laughs> JavaScript won't be rendered on that um, browser. So here I have a quick video for you guys to see. Uh, let me know if you can't hear the audio. I'm not pretty sure uh, if Zoom will play it or not. So let me know. We can't hear the audio. Uh, yeah. Can you, this might make possible. Help, cannot hear, cannot hear. Yeah, just give me a second. We'll make this work. So I will go to, let me share uh, of the video. Let's see if that plays or not. Guys, let me know once I play the video if you guys are able to hear uh, the audio. Still can't hear it. There's actually a little, little checkbox somewhere that says um, share computer audio. Hmm. And can you help me find that checkbox? I don't remember exactly where it is. Um, I think it's when you share screen at that point, you get that uh, checkbox. Yeah. So maybe stop sharing, start again and look for that checkbox. I, I did not. Uh, so go on the mute and you mute and mute button and there's a arrow that points upwards if you go okay. there, you can select a speaker same as okay let's try this guys uh let me know if it works do you hear the audio no no I think the best would be just disconnect your AirPods and uh, use computer audio. That will definitely work. Okay, Let, let's try that. Mm. Now let me know. Still no. I think it might be at the view options at the very top. Uh, there's a little arrow. It might be there. Oh, no. Uh, did you also disconnect? The Do you guys hear device? anything? Nope. Nope. I was talking about disconnecting the AirPods or like turn the Bluetooth off or something. Perhaps we can move on and we can come back to this if we have time later. Oh, sure. Um, but were you able to hear anything? I can't hear anything on my end, just like everyone else, but um, we'll look into some solutions. So maybe we can get this to work at the end of the session. LSD for your web page. Oh, it's working now. So I don't know if everyone else can hear. Yeah, it works. Okay, let's let's try it again. Um, sorry about that, you guys. Um, yeah. Let's talk front end. I don't have a bad front end either, right? Front end is all the stuff that makes the web look and feel sexy. We're talking stuff like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. This is your HTML. This is your HTML in the browser. And this is your HTML and CSS. Like LSD for your web page. Any questions? Yeah, baby. HTML just isn't that sexy by itself. So CSS makes it easy to change things like font size and color. CSS3 and HTML5 are the newest versions of HTML and CSS and are so hot right now. So hot right then we've now. got JavaScript. Every modern browser has JavaScript built in and it lets you do all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, so that's about the video. Um, let me get back to the presentation. I hope you guys could hear all of that.
So can you see my screen? Not, yep. not anyone there. Yeah. And you can hear me well, right? Yep. Cool. Um, so let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of either coding a website or using a web design platform. So if you choose to code a website from scratch, um, that means writing the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and maybe if you want to have a dynamic website, you want to write a PHP code or a Python, or just using a web design platform that I showed you earlier, which has um, Webflow, WordPress, someone okay so one of those so uh if you code uh, everything you have the complete control of your website um that means you can do anything that you want to do on the other hand the web design platforms what they do is whatever you tell them visually they try to convert it into code um many a times it's not if you just have to make a web page show, it's a good option because it saves time. But if you have to get into a lot of complexity, if you want to connect it to database or you know sell a product, then uh, it's I, I wouldn't recommend using a web design platform. But on the other hand, it's a very do-it-yourself model. It's easier and it's quicker if you have a limited um, skill set for web development. Um, but one time, uh, one thing that is not good with web design platforms is that there, are, on every stage, you'll find various paywalls. You will have basic or whatever. They'll try to, you know, take money out of your wallet. Um, on the other hand, uh, if you code a website, you'll of course need a server to host it on. But with web design platforms, the server, they give the server inbuilt. Um, yeah. So that's all I had to do with the uh, presentation. So let's head over to Webflow. And I would um, like for you guys, if you could um, follow with me and we could all do this together. And feel free to ask questions, unmute yourself and just, you know, shoot your questions. So let me reshare my screen. You see Google Chrome, right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So we go to webflow.com. So it'll ask you to It'll ask you to make an account. Um, yeah, you can use Firefox. Uh, anything works. Uh, I'm not sure how good is good Webflow works on Microsoft Edge. Um, so, but you can use Chrome or uh, Mozilla Firefox. And um, I'm gonna go a little um, fast because I have a few things to cover. Um, so here in Webflow, you'll see either you can use a blank site or you can select one of the um, templates that are, these are not templates actually, these are wireframes that you could use to just put in your um, pictures and text and just publish um, the website. Or um, you could buy um, pre-built um, templates or you could, you also have the option to um, take free templates or e-commerce templates. And they have a variety of templates that you're free to choose from. Um, but for today's se session sake, and um, since it's kind of, we all are learning together. So let's just stick to, the, to a blank canvas and let's see how um, we put in everything. So let's name this project and then teachers. And you just create um, the project. So um, this is how um, you know this is how the Webflow looks. 
So it basically gives you a blank canvas to start from. Um, a few things to understand here is um, you have, there are too many navigational things happening. Um, so on the left side, you have the web flow menu, which will take you to the dashboard or project settings. The plus will give you the options to add elements or layouts. This is where we'll be focusing um, all our work today. It also gives you a symbol dashboard that you can create your own symbols. Um, this is something that I like, the navigator menu. I'll talk about it in, in a while. I think um, for now we'll only be using the plus menu and the navigator. On the right hand side, you, you can see different settings that you have. Um, so we have the layout, we have the spacing, um, and I'll uh, describe what each one of them uh, means. We have the size, um, position, um, the text configuration, background, borders, effects, so all of this is like pretty natural, nothing very um, heavy. So let's start um, building our website. Um, so whenever you start building anything, it's important to understand that you just do not um, copy paste or drag and drop a picture onto a black canvas. So everything has to be very structured because the website we are create any website that gets made in today's day, um, it has to be responsive so people can use it on um, iPad, phone, in a landscape view or in a portrait view. So it has to have a structure, and this structure remains the same, more or less the same, if you are even writing a code. Uh, how Webflow works is Webflow already knows if you add a section to the canvas. So it already has some pre-written code um, for section. So that's what CSS basically does. So you define CSS classes um, before you start writing the HTML code. So once you have written a CSS class, um, so to understand CSS classes, basically a class um, is a set of rules. So once you have written a CSS class, um, you call it onto the HTML web page, and then you um, and then you start pushing things around. So it, for our simplicity, Webflow does all you know all the basic CSS that is to be written. Um, so first of all, you only, um, you start with a section. So you do not um, jump directly to anything that you see either a button or heading or a paragraph or anything. Um, before that, before that um, it's also important uh, to know that any good successful website needs to have a navigation um, tab. Um, because it's not going to be a standalone web page, you are going to add more pages to your website uh, over time. So let's start with the navigation bar. Um, in this case, um, just for the purpose of Webflow, the navigation bar goes standalone without um, adding a section or anything. So it's as simple as um, putting a drag and drop and you see you have a nice, um, not nice, but you know, a navigation bar that you can look for. Um, and if you just want to see how your website looks in a web browser, you see this eye icon where um, I have my pointer. So you just click on that and it will show you a full web page um, simulation of how your web page will look after you um, publish it and you click it again, the menus are back. Um, uh, with the navigation navigator toolbar, so another thing to understand here is once you create 
a, a section or anything that holds content you keep on adding things or you keep on nesting things inside one another so let's say you have a navigation bar um the navigation bar already has a container as i said um it has a brand area already defined it has three navigation items so if you see on the left hand side you can already um um see different um things that are coming you know so you can nest quite a lot of things um within each object um so yeah let's begin by so uh, as an example i let's just take that you have a project for your class um that you need to create a report site from i think that's the most uh, common example i could find um so let's just begin with that um because we all um are nyu um community members i would like the website to be violet i pretty much like the violet color so what i need to do is um whatever area that you need to change settings for you just select that either on the screen or either on the navigator um, tool panel the thing is when the website gets very complicated it's not very easy to get inside the you know inside the actual buttons or text because there are too many layers that are happen, um, taking place before you could actually get to that setting so i that's why i like this navigator toolbar because it it generally serves an easy way out to select that particular element or you will have to click twice or thrice to get to the um, to edit that text yeah so let's just try changing the color um so for now i am here in the backgrounds um option so you can choose color either through a color picker or you can write a hex code uh which basically a hex code is it tells the system that what is the values for rgb or hsd um so the tandem so, and actually the nyu violet is 570 oh i actually looked it up looked it up before the session um so yeah it's not that i'm making it up right now so i think um we all recognize this color um if everything is going well let me know or i'm the only one left here can you guys hear me knock knock anyone there we can hear you cool okay so so let's just um add add a im uh, image out there um also um you need to add <coughs> you need to add assets um to webflow before you can start using them so i already downloaded some um uh, pictures from facebook and the tandem logo so that's that it's easy for us to um start working on them uh, once those images are uploaded uh, we can start using them so you see i want to put an image at, on the left side um of the navigation bar so i just go to add element and i find the image um and i just um add the image and then i choose image and then i choose the image um quite simple um straightforward now as you see the image is quite big so we we'll get to settings now um so um okay. sometimes get 
it's too much so you are feel free to just close all of these settings um so uh, i want um as a practice always try to um input values as percent instead of um uh pixels because uh if um you define a pixel let's say you define the image the height of the image needs to be 400 pixels um and then somebody changes their um screen size let's say i'm looking at the same website using a a uh, mobile device so the 600 um pixels on a mobile device will look quite big as compared to on a laptop screen so that's why <clears throat> always try to um use the percentage so here you see i just define the maximum width that's the that's like the maximum space the image can take uh, as 25 and i'm trying to okay um it's in the navigation bar so as you see <clears throat> i can add padding um what did i click on hmm. control z for the win let's see if i can get rid of that's much better so you see i don't have to use um the settings that are already provided um i can you know mix and match as per what my requirements are so let's say this looks a little weird because the image is starting right from the top um so let's just add a bit of padding to the top side um let's say 20 pixels that's a little too much i'll explain what margins and pixels um sorry margin and padding means so let's say 15 px um so if you see there is this box take any box for example if you want to add a white space or a free space inside that box you add padding to it if you want to add white space outside that box you use margin um there there are two different settings for a reason um because when websites gets complicated um you need to reserve um if if there's a section if you are like have a long content and you want to define some property if you want if you want to have a background and you want to give extra space for that background to look proper you would use instead use padding to have that white space instead of having margin um i i'll try to explain that in more detail as we go ahead um so um we can still reduce it to um 12 so what i hate about uh webflow or any of these um design programs is the number of settings can be quite um uh, they can be quite hidden or they can you know they can restrict us webflow actually is one of the best and the one of the latest platforms that that are out there um wix and squares um it is a huge leap ahead of uh, wix and squarespace um so let's uh, change the color of the navigational menu so that it's more readable so i just change it to white um the hex code for white is um f um six times f um yep you see so you'll have to do it for everyone or you can define a class i don't um or you can just select the entire um navigational menu and do it for well, how many is this 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay no okay navigational link yeah i'm speaking with the navigation okay hmm that's weird okay
any questions so far? Yeah, there it is. Anyone has any questions? If not, I'll move ahead. So let's say you want to have one as a contact page and you want to have a team page. You are doing this project in a team. Um, could you go over the image sizing again? Sure, Eliza. Um, um, what, what exactly you did not understand? Uh, can you unmute yourself and let me know your question? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so I, I just wasn't able to resize the image that I chose. Sure, um, so I'll give you a quick example. Um, so first we add the image. Um, so the image placeholder is there and then you choose images which you have uploaded in the assets so we upload this image, uh, which says, hmm, use your voice, uh, use your voice register now to vote. Um, so you select that image and here you'll see um, size um, setting menu option. There are two dimensions, the width and the height. Now, what I was telling you guys is that you could either define pixels the image size in terms of pixels, which is the unit um, for like uh, for um, any digital screen, um, or we could use percentage. So let's say whatever you see in my um, browser right now, it's on my screen. It covers hundred percent of my width and almost ninety five percent, ninety seven percent of my height. So if I had to view an image or a website on a mobile phone, um, let's say you say that this image needs to be 1200 pixels in width. Now 1200 pixels on a mobile phone will be too large. The image will not fit on the phone you will probably have to scroll through left or right um, to see the complete image, which is uh, uh, an example, textbook example of a bad user experience. So instead you say 100%, 25%, 50%. What that means is um, just like I use 25% for this maximum width as in 25%. So this image cannot take more than 25% of the screen space. Now here the screen space would mean the image resides under the container. So, so the image cannot take more than 25% width of the container. Here uh, it's always of the parent element. So if I had to put a value for container, so it will be 50% or 100% of the nav bar element. Um, do you follow? Was I able to answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So let me delete this. Um, any other questions so far? Okay. So I take that as, as a no. So let's say you are doing this um, project in a team of two or three or four people. So you have a contact button, you have a um, team link, you have a home, uh, you could have anything A, B, C, D. Now, how you connect it to different pages? So, um, let's say you have this contact page. Now um, to connect in Webflow, you'll need to create different pages here. Um, with Webflow, you can only have two pages, like with a free basic version, you can only have two pages in a project. So you can have, um, you can make a new page from here. And then once you have the new page, let's try do it. So let's make the new page and let's name the page as contact um, parent folder none. 
if the parent folder is none, everything resides inside the same folder. So, and this is what the URL will be, uh, whatever uh, domain it is, slash contact. Looks good, let's create it. Um, and now we are in the um, contact page. So let's go back to our home page. Uh, we're just trying to hyperlink it. Um, so we select the link button. And then uh, there should be this link setting, uh, navigation link settings. So, and then you can say um, you want to use it. Um, yeah, if you click on this page, you would have the option to choose it from the pages you have in the project. So let's say this page, uh, when you see, Let's try this out. Um, so this is how it looks right now. I click on the contact and I get a blank page, which actually the contact page was the blank page. Um, so let's um, get back to our homepage. Um, or if you have to, uh, if you want to uh, add a URL to external website, external means which is not the part of the same project. You can just hyperlink it in the same way. Um, let's say, let me put the address to the school website and open in a new tab is that generally um, all the external links as a industry standard, which are not part of the same website should open in a new tab. So yeah, it, it should, you see it open in a new tab. So there we have the school's website. Um, let's get back. Um, we are close. We have a few things to still cover. So this is how um, you, know, you get a functional um, navigation toolbar. Now coming to the body part. The body is another very important um, um, section of the website. So for uh, body, as I was um, telling you, it has to be very structured because if you see um, different people will see it on different devices. Um, see, um, I have to add values for different screens. Um, so for body, you first need to have a section added um, below the <clears throat> navigation toolbar. And then uh, inside, a, inside the section, you need to have a container. What the container does is container adds a little margin or padding to left and right so that the text or whatever content you put inside the container, it does not extend to the very end, ends of the screen. You can decide not to have a container um, for um, if you want to have a slider, let's say I want to have a slider <clears throat> with different pictures I want. So I put the slider in this space. Now, I, in case of a slider, I do not want it um, to have a little white margins on the side. So I, um, so it's just that simple. Um, if, I, if you want to have those white, um, Okay, sorry. So this is why I, you know, like the navigator toolbar because I had selected something else that couldn't be deleted when I was trying to delete the entire slider. So this is where it's helpful. Let's say I want to have a container. So you see the container adds this much um, margin to both the sides and now I can add the slider. So the slider will, um, if you have a look at this, it will have this white space to the side, which I do not want it to have. So I can just go and directly delete the container from, okay, it was inside. So let me put back the slider. Now the slider should have the full width. Yeah, you see the slider now has the full width. And let's say we want the slider um, as on the school website to take the entire um, place of the screen 
So this will further clarify any doubts you guys have about um, sizing anything. So um, the width needs to be 100%. That means the complete size of the screen, it's already 100%. Let's say it also needs to have a 100% height, which should take um, the, in okay. Mm. This is pixels, pixels, hundred. Oh, okay. What is going on here? Okay, let me put that slider back again. So we have the slider. I want to use, this should be person. Right, person, person. Okay, let's hold on. Let's see, uh, let's say that I need to add a YouTube video to this slider because just going by the school website, you can, you can choose to put an image, you can choose to put a map or you can, you know, you have different options. So let's, okay, my bad. So I drag a YouTube, um, so now you see you have a YouTube um, and now it wants me to provide a YouTube ID. Um, so let's go to YouTube and search for NYU Tandem School of Engineering. Let's just select the top one and let's just- NYU Tandem The URL and put it right here. So I want it to be mute because people will um, um, look at it in the background and I want it to autoplay when the page loads. Um, let's see if I can still fix this thing. I'm concerned about the height. Yeah. Okay, see, that's where uh, most of us will make the mistake. I am trying to resize an object and not the entire um, slider or the section. So I need to have the 100% here. Okay, come on. Let's see if I can do it for everything. Well, um, I think I'm doing something wrong. So I, I'll try to fix it. Uh, uh, fix it in a while. So let's say because I also want to open the floor for any questions. So let's say I want to have a headline which says um, this website is for my class project. So I again need to have a section which is right here. In in the section now I want to have a container because the the heading cannot be to the extreme left or to the extreme right. Now inside the header, um, I will get a um, heading. Where is the heading? So I will get a heading. Now I want to add, some, add a little more white space um, to the top and the bottom of the heading. So I'll just, 
add a little, I will first select <coughs> the heading so that it's the right, um, um, right object that I'm um, putting the command to. So you see it already has a 20 pixel margin. You can also specify uh, margins and padding in percentage, but it, it is generally easier to specify it in pixels um, just for the padding and margins. So let me say I want a little more space on the top. So let's go with 40 and I also want to have 40 pixels. So if you see it, it, it reserves that space so that nothing will come inside that. So now I want, so let's say this website is for a class project. You can have anything here. Um, yeah, um, now I want to have, a, let's say I have, want to have a little description. So <clears throat> I add the description here. You see the um, web, the web floor gives the description itself. Um, this is a standard lorem ipsum dollar text. You are free to edit it however you feel like. And because we are running out of time, so this is like you can add whatever you want to this web page. Um, there are a lot of options such as tabs, videos, pictures. A lighthouse is basically a gallery of images. You can put a map, you can put a Twitter or Facebook feed, and it will give you all these settings here to connect it to your account, to any other account that you want. Now, uh, before I wrap up, I also want to show you how easy it is to publish this website um, for the general public uh, on the World Wide Web so that anyone can access uh, your website. All you need to do is go to publish here. It, it will give you a <clears throat> publish project option. Um, now you can connect to a custom domain. Um, like I have my custom domain by the name of throughofdage.net or you can let it go to the, uh, it'll automatically give you uh, a domain which will be the project name that you defined earlier. That excuse me, dot webflow.io. So I just need to publish to the selected domain and it's there. If you guys check, it should be there. Let me try, it's already published. So yeah, you see, we just deployed a website. We like it literally took us 30 minutes to, you know, have a, base, a very basic uh, web page structure. Um, the only uh, negative side of having a free um, free account is that it will always have this made with Webflow sign. But I think it, it's better than having the WordPress gives you a pretty big uh, footer. So yeah, um, I will stop sharing the screen now. Um, any questions you guys have? You could just unmute yourself and ask me any questions that you have. Anyone has any questions? Well, um, we still have a few minutes. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, think of any questions you have. I'll try to fix the slider. Um, and just so that you know, um, this will, the website will still be up if you, you know, just want to go and look at, let me copy paste the web, um, the address to this. Looks like you have a question in the chat. Oh, really? Okay.
can you use webflow to monitor how much your site has been viewed yes um Web, webflow has a um plugin for google analytics so you'll need to sign up with google analytics and google analytics will give you a ga code that you need to provide um, provide in the uh, webflow um, portal but it's very much doable and here is the link in the chat for the small website that we created And um, I'll quickly reshare my screen because I finally found the error. And now you see um, the height um, of the slider is full screen. So if you see, have a look at this uh, website, it'll give you a full screen view of the video. And when you scroll down, you'll have the text that we added so it's a little tricky uh, at times um, and it takes a little practice um, to understand web, Webflow because there are too many options. Um, yeah, let me stop sharing my screen. Yeah, any other questions you guys have? I think we still have two minutes. Feel free to ask any questions you have. Or if not, um, you guys stay safe out there, wear a mask. I hope um, this situa COVID situation gets resolved soon. And here is my email address. If you guys want to get in touch, um, you please feel free to mail in any queries you have. Yeah, any other questions?